Well, hello, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us today. Um, this week has been incredibly difficult on multiple levels for mo so many of us here in Boise. Um, and unfortunately, the loudest um, and voices have been elevated. And we are here today to say a couple things. First off, I want to say that Boise is here for each of you, um, as I know that so many of you are here um, for each of us as members of this community. Um, and joining me today, we have Dan Prinzing from the WASMA Center, Joel Poppin from Micron, and of course, Rabbi Dan Fink from the synagogue, um, who all have agreed to join me today to, to address the events of the week, um, particularly as they relate to the WASMA Center, um, but then also to talk about who we are um, and where we head moving forward together. And then I want to make this incredibly clear. The vandalism that occurred at the Anne Frank Memorial is reprehensible. Um, it's a crime um, on so many levels and it's truly horrific and I condemn it as does the city. And honestly, having had relatives who fought the Nazis um, any time, um, as so many of us in this community did, um, any time um, I see that symbol, um, I hear the words used flippantly um, or seriously um, it is an affront to all of who we are, the values that we hold dear, the, to the memories of so many people in this, um, in this community, in this country that fought against that very topic. And, and of course, to the people in this community that it targets in deep, deep ways um, that only they can truly understand. Um, to all of you in Boise who feel unsafe, who feel violated by this crime, I want you to know that we are here to protect you, that we will are investigating this crime and will hold people accountable um, appropriately. And to anyone that might have felt emboldened by what happened um, that decides to take additional actions, that thinks that this is a place that this can be done, I wanna make it clear it is not. Um, we will hold you accountable. We will do everything in our power to protect the residents and to hold true to who we are as a community, which is one that welcomes all that has and, continue, and continues to reckon with its past and knows that we can do better. And I wanna say that the graffiti at the Anne Frank Memorial is not representative of who we are as a people, of who we are as a community. We are diverse, we are welcome, we embrace the differences amongst us because it makes the fabric of our place unique, special, and so much richer. But that said, um, while we're a proud home to refugees, um, a proud home to the Anne Frank Memorial and the Declaration of Human Rights is, is published there. We also have to reckon um, with the fact um, that this act is symbolic of some of which is in our community. And I, you know, I, that is so important. We can't get beyond this if we don't acknowledge that there are elements in our community that hate, um, that we have to address it and as a community come together and move forward through it to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And that ultimately that there's no place for that in our community. And, you know, I'd say in so many ways, Boise has a proud, proud history of recognizing um, the danger of this hate, the existence of this hate and doing something about it. You know, back in the nineties, when the Anne Frank Memorial came to be, when corporations around the city came together and said, we're too great for hate. When the people of North Idaho took what was happening there, reckoned with it and created something so much greater for the good of their community. We in Boise, we in Idaho know because of the history that we've had, it is so important to address it, to move forward from it. And it's time that we do it again, that we um, renew our commitment to doing that again. And I wanna say from a, city perspective, you know, I deeply believe that we are a stronger community because we are really willing to address um, what has been here, what is here, and we're willing to talk about who we are and who we want to be. And that is so important, particularly in these tough, tough days. And that makes us in many ways unique, the connections that we have to each other, our willingness to be honest uh, about elements that are here and have been, our deep desire to protect um, the people of this place and to make the place a better community for it. And here at a city, as a city government, we too um, recognize that more must be done. We've developed a diversity, equity, and inclusion framework um, that will, you know, won't be done quickly. It'll be multiple years of work, but to ensure that we are an employer 
and a community within a community that welcomes everybody, creates safe places, is able to bring people of diverse backgrounds that, that are reflective of this community um, to bear for the public good. Um, and we are deeply committed to that work. And I wanna thank the police department and Chief Lee for their commitment to deepening our um, work around community policing, addressing the most vulnerable in this community, changing policies where we must, but ultimately keeping us all safe. And in this case, holding those um, guilty of these crimes accountable um, once we're able to finish the investigation. And this is all essential work and we can't do it alone. And it's for that reason that we have invited various um, people to join us today. Um, and they, they too will have remarks to make on the, the crime itself, on where we head, and I hope be able to help us all start to come together to address and, and come out on the other end of this so much stronger than we were. And with that, I'm gonna ask for a soft Dan Prinzing of the WASMA Center um, to make some remarks. Thank you, Mayor. Well, you said it so appropriately is this is a time of real questioning that certainly at the WASMA Center as the builder and home of the memorial, yesterday we were sad because it is now a recognition or a questioning is, is this what our community is? Is this a statement that permeates throughout our community? Well, throughout the day, the level of support that we received from community members reaching out to stand with us, many actually asking, could we hold a vigil last night and bring the community together? And while I thank them for the intent what we wanted the public to know is we can stand together, but not physically. We are living in a pandemic. How inappropriate that would be, but we are encouraging each of us to stand up in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, in our places of work, in our places of worship, and really begin to question the community that we live in and our role in it, that who are we in this moment? What we are recognizing is this is not a time to be silent, that goodness must prevail, but to do so, it's going to have to get louder, that it's going to have to drown out the voices of hate. It's going to have to drown out the voices of division and find the strength to come together. The stickers that were placed in the memorial said that they are everywhere. Well, what we were reminded yesterday is that love is everywhere. Kindness is everywhere. And so what we want to do is to mobilize that force of kindness, that we want it to echo and reflect what the memorial means to the city, to the state, and frankly, from the outpouring we're getting today, what it means to the nation. You know, we're the proud home. This is the only Anne Frank Memorial in the United States, one of the few places in the world with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and recognized as an international site of conscience. It makes a statement about us. Now I think the challenge is for us to live up to that statement. So we thank you for your leadership. We thank you for the support out of the community, but we encourage everyone, this is a time for critical conversations. And what can we do to be the force of good? Thank you, Dan. Um, and now Joel Poppin from Micron, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for inviting me and for including Mike, Ron. As Dan mentioned, the pandemic, I'm in my office and our protocols require me to wear a mask, so that's the reason for the mask. Um, I put together a few thoughts that I that I wanted to share. Uh, this is not who we are. Uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about Micron and the Boise that we know. Boise's been Micron's home for over 42 years. It's our corporate headquarters. Uh, it's the home of some of the most uh, advanced semiconductor research and design in the entire world. Uh, and it's also home to more than 6,000 of our Micron team members. We work closely with leaders, organizations, and community members in Boise and the Treasure Valley to make this the absolute best place to live. We've um, uh, provided millions of dollars of support to great nonprofits, schools, and community campaigns to make this a better community for all. And we're proud to call Boise Micron's home. Boise has always been a welcoming place for our team members that move here or that visit from around the world. Safe, um, excellent quality of living, 
uh, beautiful and vibrant, with people who are kind and empathetic and who care about others. The kinds of things currently happening in our community, like anti-Semitic and racist acts of vandalism, of harassment and violence against public officials, are wrong and they don't represent the Boise that we know. Micron and our team members condemn all forms of violence, racist, or intimidating actions in our community. In addition to being wrong and deplorable, those kind of bad actions impact our ability to recruit and retain talent, and potentially threaten our growth, prosperity, and longevity here in Idaho. So here's some things that Micron is doing to combat and avoid this behavior. At Micron, we're committed to a, developing a diverse and inclusive culture where everyone is seen, heard, valued, and respected. This year, we added the phrase, for all, to our vision statement, transforming how the world uses information to enrich life for all. And the reason that we did that is by adding for all to our vision statement, we raise the consciousness of our intention, emphasizing that Micron truly works for and stands for all. The importance of diversity of thought, backgrounds, experiences, and perspectives cannot be overstated, at least to better results, gives us a competitive business advantage, and maybe most importantly, makes us better humans. Here at Micron, we've created a number of different employee resource groups that uh, support the many diverse voices and cultures at, uh, at each of our Micron locations around the globe, as well as an ally program to wrap around those groups as supporters and advocates. We provide training and build important uh, discussions around relevant and sensitive topics to help ensure that our team members better understand themselves and each other and respect and celebrate our differences. Micron will continue to invest in community programs here in the Treasure Valley to help promote understanding and unity. We're committed to speaking up and taking action to help ensure that Boise is safe and secure and continues to be a great place to live, work, and play. We ask that you join us. Thank, thank you, Mary. Joel. Thank you, Joel. And finally, Rabbi, thank you particularly joining us today as i'm sure as the holidays begin shortly and we are very busy really appreciate having you with us as well rabbi dan oh you're muted you'd think i would have learned this by now <laughs> <Yeah. months in. laughs> Th thank you mayor in fact the the holiday of hanukkah begins this evening and hanukkah is all about shining light uh, in a time of darkness. And, and now more than ever, uh, when there is so much darkness around us, it, it is really incumbent upon us to shine light. So I thank you for this opportunity for shining your light and for inviting us as a community to do the same. In 1938 in, in Germany, much of what we now know would unfold as the, the Shoah or the Holocaust really essentially began with Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. It was a night when synagogues were burned and destroyed, when Jews were beat up on the streets, Jewish businesses were stormed. It was a night of anti-Semitism and it was a night of mob rule. And I, I couldn't help but think back on, on that night and the events of, of recent days uh, to see a, a swastika sticker on the book on that statue that, that represents Anne, Anne Frank's diary. To see the kind of mob rule where people are storming uh, the places where our government functions and the homes of our government officials uh, was was truly chilling to me. Uh, they represent the kind of intimidation and fear and uh, essentially uh, the effort to strike fear through a kind of terror uh, that we know where that goes. Uh, the spiral of injustice 
at that Anne Frank Memorial, which also had a swastika placed on it, is so important for us because it reminds us of how things unfold if good people don't stop it. And it's better to stop it earlier than later. One of the great rabbis of 2000 years ago, Hillel, uh, said, and it rhymes in the Hebrew, so I'll say it in the Hebrew, then I'll translate it. Im anili mili if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? If I am only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? We have to be for ourselves. As Hillel said, if we are not for ourselves, who will be? We have to stand for ourselves as a city. But if we are only for ourselves, it's important to note the change in pronoun. It's not who am I, but what am I? If we are only for ourselves, if we think only about ourselves, if we are not our brothers and sisters keepers, we are less than fully human. And if not now, when? This is the time. As you indicated, Mayor McLean, we are at, if not immediately approaching, a tipping point. This is the time for Boiseans to say, this is not who we are. And as you noted, Mayor, uh, I believe too that this is not who we are, but the words will be empty if we don't get out there and show that this is not who we are. Because who we are is ultimately determined by our actions, by the actions of the majority who I believe are good and caring and compassionate and want to say no to hate and will say no to intimidation. Being a rabbi, I'll end with a story. It's kind of what we do. The story is told of a, a man who in his prayers, he says to God, I, I wanna know the difference between heaven and hell. And God says, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. So the next morning, a mysterious messenger appears and he blindfolds this man and he says, I'm, I'm going to, to take you to, to hell first. He blindfolds him and they travel and he unties the blindfold and the man looks up and it doesn't look at all like what he expects hell to be. It's beautiful rolling hills and he walks into a banquet hall. It's gorgeous and there's a sumptuous feast and people are sitting around the table and then he sees that everyone's hungry. Despite all the delicious food, people can't unlock their elbows. So they can't lift the food to their mouths. And everyone's sitting looking at the feast, but can't partake. And he realizes that's hell. The messenger puts the blindfold back on the man, leads him out, walks him around for a long time more unblindfolds him and says, this is heaven. And the man is surprised because it looks exactly like hell, the same rolling hills, the same gorgeous banquet hall, the same sumptuous feast. And then he sees that in heaven, the people sitting at that table are smiling because their arms too are locked, but they're feeding their neighbors. That is who we are called to be. And I pray that in this moment, we will heed that call. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, thank you all very much for coming. Just in wrapping, you never really want to follow a rabbi or a priest or anyone else. <laughs> I, so I'll just end with this. Thanks for joining us today. Um, in the coming days, I fully expect that there will be more suggestions and opportunities for how as, as residents, engaged citizens of this community that are committed to the people and place in which we live, you can help us. Um, move forward. And, and, but in those coming days, as we work on that, think about because we can't gather together um, as a whole people around that banquet table um, to do what so many of us need to do right now. Um, but think about the organizations, the individuals in this community, but organizations in particular that are there day in, day out for those that have less, um, that stand up to hate, that make it possible for us to, con to convene um, our voices around these and other issues and think if, if it's at all possible to support those in the coming days. And also to do as all of us have asked, which is reflect on who we are 
as individuals and as a community. Um, each of us um, in this month the, of darkest days um, has a faith tradition that does um, celebrate in so many ways around light in darkness, um, hope in hard times. We need that more than ever to sustain us all. Um, and I am optimistic that from this tipping point, seeing the images we saw this week, um, seeing the, the crimes taking place at the, that have taken place at the memorial, that we are prepared and ready to dig in as a community, um, come to terms with where we're at, and work together to get to a place um, that lives up to our vision um, as of welcoming all, of being a community for everyone. So thank you all so much for coming. Take care, be well. Thank you. My dear brothers and sisters, I greet you in the words of our Holy Father, St. Francis. May the Lord give you his peace. My name is Father Bernardino Maria Sokup of the community of the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, currently missioned in Myros Limerick. And you are very welcome to our Advent Reflection series here at EWTN. I'm speaking here from St. Catherine's Church in Newry in Ireland. Over the next four weeks, we will be looking at the Sunday's Gospels. And a different priest will be giving a reflection